How's that? Looks yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm Scotty Kelling, WHDFI. I'm uh, currently president of Tapper and uh, head hardware guy, at least, on the Tangerine SDR. Hopefully, when we get the Tangerine SDR hardware done, it will be uh, turned over to the software guys and uh, they will get to have lots of fun with it. Anyway, I got lots of slides, so I'm going to go kind of fast here. I'm, I'm kind of focusing on what's, where we're going to go from here because we're almost done with the prototyping of the hardware. And uh, so we got to decide where we're going to go from here. But uh, so, how many have heard of the Tangerine STR project? Oh, good number. Okay. I'm going to go through real quick, but it's modular open source hardware for a new SDR. Uh, the Hamside guys came to us a couple of years ago and asked us to help them find an SDR that would serve, would, uh, serve their purposes. We said, oh, no problem. We'll just go online and we'll search and we'll find one that will do what you need. Well, we searched and we searched and we searched, so we really couldn't find anything that met their needs that they, would, they could afford. So we decided, well, what do hams do when you can't find what you want? You make one, right? So that's what we decided to do. And it's a group of volunteers led by Tapper and a lot of ham science guys. A lot of, there's a lot more people actually involved in this than the HPSDR project which we did earlier. So it's kind of fun that. And we'd like to acknowledge the uh, NSF and the ARDC for the grants that they've given us. And uh, if you want to come by the booth, I'll give you lots of more detail. But uh, they have enabled a lot of this hardware to be made. And we actually have hardware back at the Tapper booth to show you you'd like to take a look at real boards. So what is the Tangerine SDR? It's uh, modular, uh, like I said before, and we satisfy a lot of use cases by being modular. So we can give you a basic radio, we can give you more performance if you want to pay more, because um, we know hams are cheap, right? So they only want to pay for what they want to use. So that's what we try to give them, what they want to use. And hopefully advances the state of the radio arc. So the target applications, some of them are the ham side personal space weather station. That was the first one that prompted it. And then we said, well, if we're going to build a brand new radio, let's build one that more than one group can use. So there's a whole bunch of use cases here. And we won't dwell on them, but uh, by using the modular approach, we can pick pieces and put them together and build a radio that uh, has the performance that you want without paying for extra performance if you don't. So these are the kind of things that we want. We figure if you're going to do a personal space weather station, you're probably going to want to do some other things too, like ham things. So let's give you some ham things to do. And so uh, how about like um, reverse beacon network uh, FT8. Um, built-in digital modes. I, I don't know if I have a slide on this, but one of the cool things that the software guys did is since we are direct sampling radio, we sample all bands at once, so we can listen to all the FT8 channels at the same time, and we can listen for call signs, and so you can put a call sign in, and when your buddy shows up on 30 meters, it'll send you an email saying he's on the air. So kind of like the uh, turbo uh, packet cluster for DX, right? And I, and I guess you could do it for the X stations too if you want to do it that way. But again, multiple bands simultaneously. And I guess I do have a uh, the last bullet item. Special features such as medium notification. Okay, so hardware features, I'm going to uh, talk about this a little bit. So it is an FPGA based radio. So we used uh, all of the power of the FPGA that Nick just talked about. And uh, we have uh, direct sampling, so we have an A to D basically connected to the antenna. And um, we sample the entire HF, HF spectrum at once. And uh, we're going to end up with a web-based configuration set up, so it'll be a lot easier to configure. This is an experimenter's radio, so you're going to have some fun with it. But you don't want to beat your head against the wall trying to configure it, so we're trying to make it as easy as possible. And the idea is that uh, we're going to give you multiple UDP streams or virtual receivers from our, uh, that our FPGA will create out of the one big pipe stream that we digitized the HF, entire HF spectrum. And now the standard one comes with dual gigabit Ethernet and these other USB 3 and USB 2 interfaces, but we're looking to the future as what do we do after gigabit Ethernet? What's the next, what's the next step after gigabit Ethernet? So these are the components of the tangerine radio. And uh, I put the red arrows next to the two things that are really going to change the most. 
And again, since we're modular, the whole idea is when we upgrade the data engine, we don't have to change the RF modules or the clock module or the leaf module because they plug on to a new board, but we use the same interface. So it's kind of like uh, your, your computer uses a memory stick. It'll go into any motherboard. Maybe that's a bad idea since yeah, because every time I would go to my motherboard, memory spec has changed and I've got to buy new memory anyway. So, But the idea is to not make you buy a new RF module if you want to just listen to HF. And then the compute engine, as you're going to see, the host computer is going to have to be modified because we're going to increase the performance so much, by so much, you are going to need a bigger computer. And, and you won't have to have one, but you're going to want one. Of course, everybody wants a bigger computer right anyway, so this is your excuse to be able to go buy the next 10 core or 12 core. I actually heard that there's a 32 core Risen AMD processor now. I didn't ask how much it costs. Okay, so here's a block diagram. Um, on the left is the, are the uh, tangerine components, on the right is a single board computer. Now, when we get done modifying this, your single board computer, your Android, RPI, uh, Raspberry Pi, VIM3, whatever, is not going to cut it. So you're going to have to do something a little bit more powerful than that. But we have the two RF modules up on the left, the clock module in green there on the right, and the Leaf I.O. module, which is low speed I.O. like for things like PTT and you know, your key or paddle and things like that. And the FPGA in the middle that talks to everything, and then the major mods we're going to make are with the interfaces shown below the FPGA, the communication supports. So I'm going to go quick, quick through these RF module because I don't want to develop these. These are going to stay the same, so we not really uh, want to focus on these. So basically, uh, we're going to have two RF module sockets. Um, and uh, they transfer data up to 1.5 gigabytes per second, so they're very fast, wide interface to the FPGA. Getting the data into the FPGA is important so it can process it and send it out to you in the format that you want. And we use a dual 14-bit ADC. We cover from about 100 kilohertz to 60 megahertz with the digital, and then this is digitizing the entire band at once. Includes a 20 dB uh, amplifier and some attenuators on the board. And oh, by the way, it's uh, dual channel. You see the last one there. So here's a block diagram of it. Like I won't dwell on it, but note that there are two parallel channels that run from left to right across, from right to left across the top there. So the antennas are on the right, and the digital interface is on the left that goes to the FPGA. And that's a picture of the board. You can go by the tapper booth and see it in building five. The clock module is next. And we uh, this is for people who want a very, uh, not only very accurate frequency, but they want to do, they want a very low phase noise. And they also want to be able to create a very accurate timestamp. Because the purpose of the tangerine in the personal space weather station application is to share data amongst lots of different nodes worldwide nodes. So to do that, when you collect the data, you have to timestamp the data so that it can be correlated with other nodes that are collecting data on the same frequency, and you got to correlate them in time to, to, for, the, for the scientists to be able to use the data at a later date. So we upload the data to the cloud, we get the huge database of data, and they can pick the data from any location and correlate it with any other location in time because the data is timestamped. But in order to do that, you have to have a very accurate timestamp. And this clock module is uh, not particularly inexpensive. The GPS on it is uh, about $200. So that's just for the GPS. So obviously, we're going to have some lower price loans for people who just want a nice frequency standard. They want to be on frequency. But they don't really care so much about the timestamping. Like I said, these are three variants here, high performance, mid grade, and low cost. Whereas John Kruger's, who was, I think, bronze, silver, and gold. He was a marketing guy, you know, so. That's John Ackerman. So here's a block diagram of it. It includes the GPS on the lower left and a synthesizer on the, in the, uh, the right-hand side. The, this guy right here is a synthesizer. It's got 10 outputs. We only used uh, about four outputs, I think, on the, on the tangerine, but the other ones are available for other applications. 
And there's a picture of the clock module with the GPS there on the top, the U-Block GPS. Okay, the leaf module I don't want to dwell on. It's a low-speed I.O. module. It's kind of boring, but it's uh, similar to a Raspberry Pi hat, but we added some high-speed I.O. there at the bottom. And we'll skip over that. And now this is the part that we're going to make some changes to. So we're going to take the FPGA that we had on the existing uh, Tangerine SDR. It has 50,000 logic elements. And the logic elements, like uh, Nick was talking about flip-flops and lookup tables. Well, a logic element is two flip-flops and two four-bit lookup tables. It has 50,000 of them. Hello. It has 50,000 of them in the little silicon chip that's on the board. Well, 50,000, that's not very many, right? So, so we're going to replace it with a bigger FPGA with 270,000 logic elements. Of course, you don't get anything for nothing, right? There's no free lunch. It costs more money. So it's going to be a more expensive board, but it's going to do a whole lot more. And then more memory, more and bigger memories. Of course, we all need more and bigger memories. I forget why. Okay. Uh, we're going to take the five gigabit Ethernet, uh, sorry, the, the gigabit Ethernet, dual gigabit, gigabit Ethernet, the five gigabit USB three. Can you tell them something? Here? And and the and the USB two. We're going to rip those all out, and we're going to put in uh, ten gigabit Ethernet interfaces using. Um, I have X2 modules, but they're not really X2 modules, they're, but they're plug-in modules. And the idea is that you can plug in a copper driver or a fiber driver or a long-range fiber driver, whatever you want to, whatever you want to do that stops the lights from flickering. That'll be the one you want to pick. So we're going to take the existing board, which is uh, kind of the underlayment here. We're going to take the leaf board that's in the upper right corner, and we're going to rip that out. And we're going to take the other, the other COM interfaces on the left and rip them out. And we're going to put these two SFP modules in that will be able to do 10 gigabit Ethernet. So this is kind of an example of a station you would use with some modifications. So you can see where we took out the gigabit Ethernet, put in 10 GB. And then especially of note the bottom one, bigger, 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 bigger PC. Because you're going to get 10 gigabits of data, which is a, uh, most PCs won't be able to handle that. So our protocol that we're developing will actually be able to send data streams to multiple PCs. So if you have a house of PCs, you can send small streams to each PC and you won't have to go out and buy yourself a and the build schedule, the RF board and the uh, clock module are done. And uh, as you can gravitate to the bottom there, the DEMR2 is pending funding. We asked for funding from ARDC to do the development for this board. And this is really interesting because I've been stuck on the data engine not being able to get FPGAs. I placed the order in March of 2021. I got a December 2022 delivery date, which kind of puts the kibosh on having many boards. And now they just re-upped it to 20, uh, May of 2022, which is like, okay, when I get home, maybe. But we ordered the uh, 270 logic element FPGAs back in December. I got them in March. So I have the FPGAs now already. So here we go. <laughs> so anyway, so the idea is that we're going to, if I can go back here, we're going to beef up the FPGA and beef up the communications interface. And we're going to have a lot more fun because now instead of just maybe six or eight streams of data, you can have maybe 50 streams. So what this ends up being is like a, a RF server that you can serve up data to your network in your home and you can all be listening at the same time. Anyway, so uh, just to give you a little quick plug for Tamper and then we I've got to go here. Um, we, we support radio, radio, radio development with R&D funding, and we're uh, really like experimenters, and if you do the work, we figure you should probably have to pay the money to uh, lay out the money to buy the hardware, so we try to help you there. And another plug in September, if you like technical conferences, you like more like what Nick talked about, what I talked about, uh, come to Charlotte in September. 
And we actually haven't decided whether it's going to be an in-person one or a Zoom session. So keep looking at the TAPA website and we'll have the answer up here probably within a few weeks of the convention here. And uh, anything you ever want to know about Tangerine SDR, is at tangerinesdr.com. And so go there and, uh, or come talk to us at the booth. We'll uh, give you the lowdown. And that's all I have. Thank you.